Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna be reviewing a project called Caspa Network, which is currently ranked number 91 on CoinGecko and has a market cap right now of 404 million. Keep in mind though, none of this is financial advice. Always be sure to do your own due diligence. So let's dig in. It's got 186,000 followers over on Twitter and you can really only say a few things in the bio because it's very short and they chose to say blockchain for the builders, upgradable smart contracts and predictable gas fees. Casper is a powerful public smart contract platform. It is built by builders for builders. It's upgradable, a fully upgradable and secure modular network designed to grow and evolve. Casper is the most customizable blockchain on the market. So if you have upgradable smart contracts, essentially what that means is that developers can go in later on and they can change things. Depending on what the use case for the smart contract is, that could be a good or a bad thing. For example, over on Ethereum, smart contracts are immutable by default. And even new projects, if you go on Coin Mar CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko, if they have not renounced the smart contract if they can still make the if they can still upgrade the smart contract you'll you'll actually get a warning on the CoinGecko coin market cap websites so it's not exactly and necessarily a good thing and they do claim to be decentralized caspa is an open source permissionless proof of stake blockchain so why are they leaning so much on this upgradable smart contracts let's read this paragraph here on their vision page Casper's smart contracts offer security and upgradability, giving developers the ability to perform bug fixes, not a bad thing, and improvements to the contract after it has been deployed on chain. That so far isn't that bad. This is especially important in the case of critical bugs or vulnerabilities that need to be addressed in a timely manner. And this is so that you can upgrade these smart contracts without forking the network, to my understanding. Upgradable smart contracts also allow for the contract to be updated to reflect changes in business requirements or regulatory compliance. And as we continue on through here, you'll see who their real customer target is. Built by builders for builders with support for popular open source languages like Rust and Wasm, developers can take advantage of tools they already know and love to create on the Casper network. And this is, this is key here, this is good. This means you don't have to learn a new language or technology. You can use the skills you already have to make a real impact in the blockchain world. And that's one thing I hear people uh, complain about with Ethereum. Well, I'm not a dev, so I haven't heard them specifically, but Solidity is a pretty niche language and not everybody knows it. Developers that use other languages, they have to come in and essentially learn a brand new language and some developers unless they have a product they really think will do well on Ethereum, they're not gonna come over and experiment since it needs that much work to even get started. Now let's talk a little bit about the funding, the history, and the team. In September 2019, Casper Labs held a private round of Casper token sales, which was attended by well-known companies and hedge funds in the crypto industry, Consensus Capital, Axiom Capital, and they raised $14.5 million. Then in late 2020, early 2021, Casper Labs held two more private private sales, raising 14 million and 18 million respectively. The purpose was to raise funds for the development of the Casper mainnet, which was launched on March 31st, 2021. So mainnet has been going now for about two years and five months and was accompanied by a public token sale on the CoinList exchange in which any user could participate who passed KYC. So in my opinion, this is not any user could participate. Uh, other than US residents, also not any user, <laughs> in accordance with the provisions of federal securities laws. I'm editing this video and I thought it'd be a good idea to go check the chart to see what happened closer to this mainnet launch, basically the beginning of April. And they don't, uh, on coin, Gecko, they don't have it all the way back to March at on mainnet, but it looked like it went from a top only from $1.33 and has completely just gone down. So I don't know if that public sale, I'm just speculating here, I don't know, but it didn't even pump into the bull run in November. So I'm kind of wondering if it was just a an opportunity for a to be exit liquidity and everybody might have dumped 
all their tokens. Total speculation though, I don't know that, just felt like it was important to share because I didn't talk about it in the video. Here's who Caspa is really built for. It is focused on the needs of companies. And this reminds me a little bit of like Quant, for example. Companies can create their own blockchain applications and choose between public and private blockchains. So public or walled garden traditional financial systems, which we don't want, right? They determine how to manage, I guess some though might be that way. Like for example, medical, you may want it to be private and sort of walled because I wouldn't want my medical information or, and I'm sure, right? out there in public. They determine how to manage applications privacy and set permissions for their use without compromising security and performance. And they do say they are future proof. And the part I wanna focus on, they have predictable network charges, gas, to ensure the stable operation of the network even under high load, right? Which is something Ethereum struggles with. You know, the last bull run, it was sometimes $400 in gas fees to do a transaction over there. On to the C-suite team here, and I'm sorry if I butcher some of these names. You've got Renal Manahar. Uh, they have experience in Bain, uh, Microsoft, Bain, and Bain Capital. They also ran a $1 billion hedge fund and is an early investor in Ethereum. Then you've got Meta Parlikar, CTO. They have experience at Adobe, Omniture, and MP3.com. Cliff Sarkin, former VP of Business Development at DNA Fund. So pretty big They've got some experience and they sound like pretty heavy hitters. Then you've got Daniel Mar Marfort, previously the head of Status.im with a market cap of 100 million. You can go check out their team page. They do have more of the team. And if being doxxed is, con is a concern to you, then they are definitely doxxed. This is what the token distribution looked like initially. You had a validator sale, 19.4%, developer incentives, coinless. The public offering was 16%. The rest, it looks like, is really team advisors, really early, really early investors and, you know, incentives, things like that. It's got 32 second block times, as you can see here. Uh, and it's also got, right now, at least a 10.74% uh, staking emissions right now, according to this. It is limited to 100 validators. It is the top 100 with the most stake in the network. To my understanding though, it is permissionless. So anyone can do it as long as you have a big enough stake. Looking at the dApps though, I was mainly focused on finding a DEX. That's usually one of the first things built on, you know, these smart contract platforms. So I searched by popular. And if you go through, you've got a lot of staking, you've got NFTs, centralized exchanges, but I made it all the way to the third page and could not find a single decentralized exchange. So although they have, you know, decentralization seems to be important to them, I don't think they're focused on decentralization on the personal, you know, normal individual level. They're thinking of decentralization in terms of businesses and their projects are likely going to reflect that. I even went to DeFi Llama to search for Casper Network to see if you know, maybe there was a dap I was missing or something like that. And DeFi Llama isn't even covering it, even though they've had smart contracts and been on mainnet for two and a half years. My final thoughts on this one, if you're interested in projects like Quant that are really focused on businesses and bringing their more private, you know, and permissioned, I wanna say, even though this says it's permissionless to run a validator, I think that most people that will build dapps on top of this, they're gonna have private blockchains is just my opinion at least but so quant and maybe this one if you're into that kind of thing and think there could be some value here uh this might be one to, to consider if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button subscribe hit the notification bell for more content like this in the future and i'll see you on the next video